Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So, dolls, I'm really excited about doing this video today because I'm using the pictures that were given to me as a gift as family pictures for my dollhouse using picture frames that are actually nail art. Now, in addition to doing the nail art frames, I do have several other frames that I made a while back out of several different types of materials, but I never had pictures that actually fit them. Now, I did receive two sets of pictures, and I will be using images from both sets of pictures from the previous unboxing. And I will leave a link in the description so you can see the full video of when I received all these lovely gifts in my unboxing. So here I'm just pulling out some of the items that I'm setting aside to put into the dollhouse, but I wanna save a couple pictures. That picture I'm saving for Saudi and Marguerite. Now the ones from the box came as gifts from some of my dolls, but these that are laying on the table over to the side are ones that I made from polymer clay and they actually have a few family pictures in them as well. So I'm using all of these, the ones I made and the ones I got as gifts, to scatter among the rooms in the houses to really give them a warm, homey, cozy look. Having lots of family pictures on the wall definitely looks more natural than art on my dollhouse walls. Now these are a couple pictures that I made with the polymer clay that I used stamps that had fruit in them. I have always thought they were really cute and I'm going to find somewhere to put them in the houses as well. So let me go ahead and set aside the ones that are ready to go, ready to put in the house and work on the ones that need a little help. So dolls, these are the frames I was referring to that I could never find pictures to fit inside them. Several of them I made from liquid polymer clay and a couple of them are mass produced. Now this was a small charm that I found in a little bag of what are you keeping that for in my Christmas bundle. And the other tiny one is a Crisen Bond frame. I believe this is a really great example of how many times I believe in making more than what I need for a particular project because the spares can always be used for something else. I always make a couple extra dolls. So let's go ahead and get to this really cool nail art. Now these picture frames are absolutely lovely. They are sold several different places. These were a gift to me, but I have seen them on Amazon and several other sites, and I will leave a link in the description. But they actually were made to be nail art. Now, these were kind of in bronze and copper colors, but I really have a thing for antique gold, so I did use my rubbing buff to change them to the color I like. And I also used them to add a slight patina to these frames that I made from polymer clay to add it on top of the black paint that I used as my base. Now, while the rub and buff is drying on those, I did have this other frame that I really liked a lot. Now, its original color is gold, but it was kind of a matte gold, didn't look very antique or metallic. To me, it kind of looked kind of plain, and I really wanted it to look old and vintage. So I added my acrylic paint and alcohol wash and coated the entire picture frame now, after the first coat had dried, I really didn't like it, so I added a second coat. And after I added the second coat, I wasn't satisfied with that either. So after going over it with two layers of my alcohol and acrylic paint wash, I ended up using the gold rub and buff as my third layer for distressing and aging. And I really believe that adding multiple layers of whatever products you're using actually gives the item a more realistic look and mimics the look of how aging and oxidation actually occur. It builds up. Now that my frames are all ready and prepped, let's go ahead and start choosing some pictures. So I'm just kind of little by little just sorting through some of the pictures to see which ones would work. Now this was a frame I made previously out of some teeny pieces of wood, and I was just checking to see if one of these small pictures would fit inside that, and it did. Now, of the collection of pictures that I received, I will be using some of these today. Some of these images seem like they'll be pretty compatible with the shapes and sizes of the frames I'm using today. This is a really cute one. I'm definitely going to frame that at some point, but I don't know if the ones I have today are going to fit that. I just love this baby and the little boy with the hat and the suit. <laughs> now, one of the really great things about the little nail art pieces is that they have adhesive on the back. Now you can definitely add glue to it, but I would advise after you put your picture down to add 
another piece of paper to the back to help give your picture frame a little body and some weight. And as a practice, I am gluing wallpaper as a third layer to finish it. Now be advised that this project is pretty tedious and it will take some time. After you choose a picture, you will need to make sure that it's centered in the frame. And after they stick, you will have to trim them off. Now it's best to allow your backing and your finishing wallpaper to dry completely before you try to trim it off because the nail art pieces are pretty fragile they're made of some type of really thin plastic and if you cut them while the glue is wet they could tear now i'm pulling this up close so you can see how i really centered the picture now this would be a situation if you have a really teeny pair of super sharp scissors to trim the edges and the part that you use as the backing. Dolls, this is not a project you can rush through, take your time, or you'll actually cut into the actual frame when you're trimming the excess. Now, Dolls, I'm going to warn you, once you get started, you're not going to want to stop because you keep on sizing and trying different pictures to see how they fit and how they look framed in those tiny little spaces. It's amazing how just the frame really transform the little images from tiny photographs into what looked like little bitty family photos and frames. Now I felt like the main objective to framing these pictures was really really zeroing in on the subject of the picture. To me it would be equivalent of cropping a picture in your phone and really getting the part that really is the most significant and the most prominent in the images. And I really have to admit, dolls, I had so much fun. It seemed like the more I made, the more I wanted to make. And I really, really think that a very simple project like this can have such an amazing impact in your doll house. After I got a good amount of the tiny nail art pieces together, I started to focus on those larger frames that I had been saving a long time and never had pictures to fit inside them. So as I shifted my focus to the larger pictures, I realized I had more than one option. I had some mass produced frames. So I did the same thing. I glued them to a piece of manila folder so that the backing would be firmer. And this particular one was one of my mass produced frames and it actually had a tiny glass in it. And I lifted the glass out of it and used the glass to be my template for trimming the photo. And dolls, forgive me for this particular part of the video being out of frame. I was working and so focused, I didn't realize where I was holding my hands. But you can see that I'm just trimming around the outside of that little glass piece to make sure that it fits inside the part of the frame where the glass will fit. Now dolls, as you know, these pictures were given to me from one of my precious dolls. But it's really amazing that the pictures and the images look like people that I could have known or that I have known. And although these are images of people who are absolute strangers to me, they look very familiar and similar to pictures that I found among my own vintage family pictures. Now, another thing that I'll absolutely want to advise is that you try several different pictures within a frame. And it really is an art to framing in itself because depending on the picture, and the subject and the background. Just pay attention to your pictures. Don't just slap it inside of anything. Make it visually appealing to make sure your finished result is as realistic as possible. Now that all those frames are drying, I wanna show you what I did to make these other little frames. Now this actually was like a charm for a bracelet or a necklace, and I broke off the part that was supposed to have the jump ring to it. And I took these little frames and actually did the same thing that I do to everything else. I added some antique gold rub and buff. Now both of these frames were some type of metal, the silver one and the copper. Now for this little frame, because the area for the picture was round, I used one of my really small circle templates to cut the shape of the picture out. So one by one, I chose a picture that would fit inside each frame and glued it inside. So I hope this video helps you to develop your eyes so you can see all the things you can use to make miniatures. Now for some of the tiny frames, in order for it to stand up, I did glue a little tiny wooden bead to the back of them. Now I will leave links in the description of how to make other types of picture frames. I just really wanted you to see how perfect nail art is in size and scale for so many different things in your dollhouse.
Now, dolls, if you've enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe and always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.